Living at depths of up to 5,000 feet, the hagfish is one of the strangest creatures in the ocean. And there's plenty on the list. The goblin shark, sea spiders, red-lipped batfish, and even people swimming during winter. Ah, It's freezing, man! Get out! Although it looks like an eel, this fish belongs to the agnatha species. That's fish without jaws. And the family also includes lampreys. Terrifying monsters with disc-shaped suction cup mouths filled with spiraling rows of teeth. Hmm. Hagfish have two tongues, four hearts, and no eyes or stomach. Like something from another planet. And what sets them apart from anything on this planet is that they have a skull but no spine. They don't have bones either. That unique spineless skull is made entirely out of cartilage. The same stuff in your ears and nose. That's right. Scaleless with skin that seems to fit over them like an oversized holiday sweater. It'd be a mistake to think this frail little creature would be an easy dinner. They've evolved to escape from other fish like Houdini's of the deep. And the trick is slime. Lots of it. When something tries to gobble them up or gets just too close for comfort, hagfish release a protein from the holes lining their sides. When this stuff meets the surrounding water, it balloons dramatically, as in 10,000 times. The more water touches it, the bigger this goo ball gets. A teaspoon of hagfish slime can turn into a bucketful in a second. It instantly clogs the gills of any fish trying to chomp down on our slimy friend, even sharks. But hagfish have gills too. So why doesn't the slime block their own? Easy peasy. This hagfish will simply tie itself into a knot and scrape the slime off its body. Doesn't mean their slime comes without inconveniences. Sometimes it gets in the hagfish's tiny nose. To get rid of it, they make themselves sneeze, sort of. Gesundheit! This fish's homemade goo is made of flexible strands that are surprisingly strong. As in, stronger than nylon. Imagine falling into a pool of the stuff. You'd struggle to move your arms and legs to swim. It might feel like rubber bands tying you up. But you'd be perfectly safe as long as the stuff doesn't get in your nose or throat. In that case, you'd be as unfortunate as those gilled creatures trying to bite into the slimy fish. And hey, our own species is eyeballing it for loads of potential uses. From parachutes to cars and even clothing. Forget about diving in a pool of this goo you could be wearing a slime suit in the future. But when it comes to landish creatures, the platypus is just as weird. This mammal has a duck bill, a beaver tail, webbed feet, and lays eggs. Like a lot of fish, the platypus and its relative, the echidna, have no stomach. But they don't need one. They store their food in their cheeks until they surface. Once they've eaten, the food goes straight to their gut. Just when the platypus couldn't get any stranger, they also sweat milk for their platypops. When winter has put bears, bats, snakes, and even myself into hibernation, there's one animal that does things a little differently. During the cold season, the wood frog lets itself freeze, sometimes for up to seven months. Like a brown popsicle, they fill their body with a syrupy, unnatural antifreeze to stop crystals from forming. And when the right time comes, they can just thaw themselves out, even multiple times a season. These frogs will find a nice covered area in the forest and wait until spring comes. Once they're thawed, they'll hop away like nothing happened at all. When your name's the boxer crab, you have to live up to it. Ding ding! Round one! This little crab is super smart. It has sea anemones living in its claws, and these DIY boxing gloves pack a punch. Carrying around these little tentacled sea creatures helps this tiny crab defend itself against fish and anything bigger than it. When feeling disturbed, the crab starts swinging and its gloves start stinging. The tentacles of sea anemones are covered in stinging cells that help the animal capture its lunch. Yep, that's no plant, it's a hungry beast. It's a win-win relationship. For helping the crab protect itself, the gloves get a fun ride around the ocean floor and free meals. Its other names don't sound as tough, but I assure you, the pom-pom or cheerleader crab looks cute but shouldn't be messed with. If you're afraid of spider webs, this is one to avoid. 
Darwin's bark spider is an orb weaver type that creates a jaw-droppingly large web for a penny-sized spidey. The silk in its web is 10 times stronger than Kevlar and double the strength of any other spiders on the planet. And the webs themselves can be as big as a king-sized bed. Not that you'd want to sleep in one. Their web bridges are even more impressive. They can be over 80 feet long. The spiders build them across rivers to catch bugs flying over the water. Or you, rafting down the rapids. Watch out! And here I thought I spent too much time on the web. Gone to the beach on a hot sunny day when you realize you're out of sunblock. Hey, just do what hippos do. When they sweat, they create their own sunscreen. Living in the water for most of its life, a hippo's skin must stay wet to keep hydrated. When they do have to venture out of the water, something strange happens. The red or pink color we sometimes see on hippos are little beads of fluid that absorb the sun's UV and protect the skin from burning. They're also highly acidic to help stop bacteria growing on the skin. Hippos might look big and clumsy, but they could easily outrun and outswim the best Olympic athletes out there. Must be why the ancient Greeks called them hippopotamus the river horse. Now, when you're a plant, it's hard to defend yourself. But not for the acacia tree. It has built-in bodyguards, ants. When a few of the leaves are getting nibbled on, the vibrations alert the ant brigade to head out and stop the trespasser. Living in the hollow thorns of the branches, the acacia ants come out and shock the hungry animal with their wasp-like stinger. The tree is so grateful to the ants that it feeds them yummy nectar. Not only do the ants stop animals from grazing too much, they also help improve the tree's health by reducing the bacteria that would be on the leaves. Now, never heard of a sea squirt? I don't recommend getting too close unless you want water in your face. The sea squirt may look like an underwater plant, but it's an animal more closely related to us than a cockroach. These squishy little creatures are in an umbrella category with vertebrates, like you, me, and anyone or anything else with a fancy backbone. That big, happy family is called the chordates. Starting as little tadpole-like larvae, sea squirts wiggle around in the ocean for a short time until they find a nice bit of water to call their own. Since they're unable to feed themselves, drastic measures must be taken. And I mean drastic. Like oysters, barnacles, and mussels, the sea squirt has a glue-like substance that cements it to the first place it lands. Once they've picked their forever home, they need to start eating. The first thing to go is their own tail. Then they absorb their gills and even their brain. No longer need the ability to navigate the ocean, it's become unnecessary. They're not heartless, though. The sea squirt's ticker is very similar to a human's. It even looks a little like ours. Now, here's one you won't forget. Lobsters, crayfish, and crabs have teeth in their stomachs. After they gulp something down, the food in their stomach gets ground up by large teeth. This is called gastric milling, and it helps the crustaceans digest it easier. One species of crab had to take it a step further, of course. The ghost crab uses these teeth not only for eating, but also to growl. By grinding their tummy teeth when scared or struggling with another crab, they're warning to get away. Well, when you don't have vocal cords, stomach growling will have to do. They're also the fastest type of crab on the planet. They can move 100 body lengths per second. That'd be like you running one and a half football fields in the blink of an eye. Whoa, look at that! Have you ever heard of an island that is regularly attacked by sharks? For many years, people living there haven't been able to find a way to stop this. Neither can they understand why sharks come there so often. So, what's going on? Why do these predators keep bothering this specific island while completely ignoring the others in the area? Let's go to this mysterious place and try to find out. July 22, 2015. The ocean waters near Reunion Island were clear and transparent. The western part of the island, St. Lou, had always been a great spot for surfing. But on this pleasant sunny day, one of the locals almost lost his life. A six-foot bull shark appeared out of nowhere. Once right next to the shore, it suddenly charged at surfer Rodolphe Ariagui, 
his friend, doctor, and professor of geography at the University of La Reunion, Erwan Lagabriel, was nearby, talking with two other surfers at that moment. Suddenly, they heard some noise. Realizing that it was his friend, Lagabriel rushed to help. The shark was 65 feet away from him. He said that all of this felt like some kind of a horror movie. He rushed to Ariagi, even though he didn't understand what exactly had happened. At first, Ariagi's body was surrounded by white foam. It then began to turn pink, and then red. La Gabrielle said later that it had been one of the scariest things he had seen in his life. Fortunately, when he swam closer, the shark had already been gone. La Gabrielle knew that in most cases, a second attack doesn't happen. So he hurried to help his friend. It took them some time to get back to the shore. When La Gabrielle pulled his friend onto the beach, he immediately made a tourniquet from a surfboard leash. After that, Monsieur Ariagui was rushed to the hospital. Fortunately, this story has a good ending. Although the 45-year-old man lost his arm, he still survived. But he was one of the few lucky ones. Because this horrifying story is just one of dozens that happened on Reunion Island in recent decades. Reunion Island is one of the regions of France. It's located right near Madagascar, together with its neighbor, Mauritius. They're both located at the same latitude as Australia. These two islands are very similar. They have almost the same climate and natural conditions, similar languages and cultures. But there's one huge difference between the two of them. In Mauritius, people can relax and have fun in the warm waters of the Indian Ocean, swimming with scuba gear and watching dolphins. Meanwhile, on La Reunion, locals are afraid even to put their fingers in the water. But why is that? Unfortunately, Reunion now has a strong reputation as a shark island. By 2018, 56 attacks had occurred there. From 2011 to 2016, the number of these cases accounted for 16% of the worldwide shark attacks. Now there are warning signs everywhere on Reunion. Local citizens and fishers have begun to discuss the options of large-scale shark trapping. The authorities forbid people to swim almost everywhere, except for a few more or less safe places, like, for example, a coral lagoon. And still, any fisher or scientist knows that sharks can easily get inside these coral rings. In other words, locals and tourists can't feel completely safe anywhere on the island. Meanwhile, in Mauritius, the last shark attack happened in the 1980s. People come here to relax, and everything is perfectly fine. So the question is, why in the world is La Reunion so unlucky? Dr. La Gabrielle, the hero I mentioned before, set himself the goal of explaining this strange phenomenon. His study showed that over the past 30 years, the probability of a shark attack on Reunion had increased by 23 times. And in 9 out of 10 cases, it turns out to be a bull shark. If you haven't heard about it, this creature looks exactly like what you would imagine when you hear the word shark. It's one of the most popular species and the one that you often see in different movies and cartoons. These sharks live in tropical and subtropical waters in all oceans. Most often, they're found, yeah, you've probably already guessed, in the southern waters between Australia and South Africa. This place is even nicknamed a shark highway because these predators really, really like to chill around there. This is also one of the most aggressive shark species, and it's very dangerous for humans. Unfortunately, it's also very tolerant to different water salinity, which means they can basically swim even in fresh water and be totally cool with it. But why do all these reunion island attacks happen so often? Well, there are many theories and many different factors that might play their role in all this. Mark Soria, a researcher at the IRD, the French National Institute for Research and Development, decided to conduct a study together with his team. They spent three years trying to collect data on 45 tiger sharks and 38 bull sharks living in local waters. The National Research Institute of France supported this study. It was also funded by three research foundations, regional, national, and European. That's when you know that the problem is serious. And now, here are the main theories developed by Saria's team and La Gabrielle. The first one is excessive fishing. 
Experts suggest that long-term fishing and catching small reef sharks, which competed with dangerous sharks for food and territory, eventually led to these dramatic consequences. Unfortunately, when predatory bull sharks ran out of food, they just had to go looking for it near the coast. For bull sharks, surfers on Reunion look like sick, weakened fish, and therefore an easy meal. Also, while in Mauritius, surfers tend to hang out near sandy beaches. On Reunion, they choose places where waves break at coral reefs. But this is exactly where the sharks choose to search for food. So, yeah. The second possible reason is muddy waters. Bull sharks like such conditions very much. And although there are no natural places like these on Reunion, the reason could be the construction of urban areas. Muddy fresh water gets into bays from cities. This water attracts sharks, and this is where the attacks take place most often. But then we can ask again, why not Mauritius? Urbanization is also in full swing there, after all. There are many places in Mauritius where sewage waters flow into the ocean. Well, then we can conclude that this is not the only factor. There have to be others. For example, there is an active volcano, Piton de la Fournaise, on Reunion Island. Thanks to this beautiful volcano, there are rich flora and fauna on the island. And this could be great if it didn't attract too much attention from predators. Because of the volcano, the shores of Reunion are less steep, which makes it easier to swim closer to the coast. And sedimentary rocks that get washed away from the slopes of the volcano can attract bull sharks. As we already know, these guys love muddy waters. There are some other theories. For example, Lagabriel suggests that attacks may be connected to an increase in the shark population. Or maybe that's because these creatures become more aggressive during mating periods. Some people assume that all of this could be Mauritius's fault because they banned catching and selling sharks for meat. But Surya and other experts strongly disagree with this. Not many people on both islands bought this meat to make any significant difference. Anyway, this whole situation caused a lot of tension on Reunion. A big part of the population now supports the idea of catching sharks on a large scale. They also built some underwater fences near the island, and the maintenance of these fences costs a million dollars a year. It may seem pretty extreme, but drastic times require drastic measures. But despite all these terrible stories, in general, sharks aren't nearly as dangerous as we think. They almost never attack divers, unless a person provokes them. Experienced divers often compare sharks with stray dogs. These animals shouldn't be feared, but should be respected. Anyway, let's hope that La Reunion will be able to solve this problem, and people will be able to swim in its warm, beautiful waters again. Some sharks have an eerie ability to spit out their stomach and then pull it back into place. Well, that would be handy. Most sharks eat huge amounts of food. But the problem is they can't digest everything they've gulped down. So they need a way to get rid of such stuff as sea turtle shells and beaks, bird feathers and bones, lobster claws and whatnot. And then these amazing creatures willingly barf up their whole stomach, along with all the contents. After the shark is done, it pulls its main digestive organ back in. And the entire process usually takes no more than a second. Some shark species, like great whites or mako, have a special eye-warming system. Their retina heats up their eyes and brain. This not only helps them detect movement better, but also improves resolution. As for the mako shark, this species often travels vertically across different temperatures. Unlike most people with only one movable jaw, sharks can freely move both their lower and upper jaws. This allows them to get a better grip on their meal and chew it up faster and more thoroughly. That's comforting. Sharks give birth to a large number of little ones at once. It depends on the species, of course, but let's say the blue shark is famous for producing more than 130 pups at a time. Great white sharks have a more powerful bite than most jungle cats. A 20-foot-long underwater hunter can produce a force of more than 4,000 pounds per square inch. And that's a bite four times stronger than that of a lion or tiger. People with their measly 150 to 200 psi bites aren't in the running whatsoever. Swell sharks defend themselves by swallowing huge amounts of water. Then the shark's body becomes twice its normal size, and this scares potential danger away. Sharks can grow more than 50,000 teeth during their lifetime, 
but not all of their teeth are the same. The strongest and most massive ones are at the front, and those closer to the back are smaller and not so powerful. But if the front teeth are damaged, these weaker ones can replace them. It's possible because sharks' teeth aren't as deeply rooted as humans and can move. Shark skin has the same feel as sandpaper. It's made of teeny, teeth-like scales. They point towards the animal's tail. This helps to reduce the friction that occurs when sharks move through the water. Whale sharks have extremely thick skin. In some places on their body, it can be 6 inches thick. It's one of the toughest in the animal world. Scientists have to make loads of effort if they want to get this creature's blood sample. Sharks have an incredible sense of smell. But besides that, they use one more sense to detect other animals. There are special pores around their head, near the nostrils, and under the snout. Those are special organs, something like second sight. Every creature generates a tiny electrical field. Thanks to the pores, sharks can spot these electrical fields and figure out where other animals are. Sharks are incredibly sharp-eared. They can hear their potential meal from 3,000 feet away. They can also catch low-frequency sounds, like the ones produced by a fish's contracting muscle tissue. Sharks have been around for more than 400 million years. It means they've lived through four out of five mass extinctions. This makes them way older than Mount Everest, humans, dinosaurs, and even trees. These creatures go back to the period when coral reefs were just beginning to form. Some shark species can jump out of the water, like the great white shark or the basking shark. They're known to leap from more than 8 feet up into the air. Thanks to this maneuver, they can catch such animals as seals or seabirds. But unless you're in South Africa, you aren't likely to see sharks jumping out of the water. Shark skeletons are made of muscle and cartilage, which are lighter and twice less dense than bones. This makes sharks more flexible, which allows them to make sharp turns when they're chasing other animals. Hammerhead sharks have a weirdly shaped head for a reason. Thanks to it, these creatures have incredible 360-degree vision. Their eyes are tilted a bit forward, and it allows them to have an overlapping field of view. The goblin shark's terrifying jaws are attached to elastic ligaments. They can unfold from the animal's snout for up to 3 inches. It allows the animal to catapult its mouth forward to catch other marine creatures. Sharks don't sleep as you do. Some species have to keep swimming all the time. Otherwise, water will stop flowing through their gills and they won't be able to breathe. Others do rest, but they don't enter an unconscious state. They just go into special rest periods. These creatures don't have eyelids. That's why their eyes remain always open and their pupils monitor their surroundings. They also keep their mouth open so that the water can pass through their gills. Sharks can travel remarkably long distances without needing any rest all thanks to their bizarre sleeping pattern. For example, great whites can swim distances of more than 2,000 miles without stopping to eat or rest. How come these creatures don't starve? They draw on the fat stored in their livers. By the way, this organ can compose up to a third of the animal's body weight. Contrary to popular belief, sharks do not and cannot swim in reverse. Their tails propel them forward, and their pectoral fins help them to keep their balance and turn. It means that, anatomically, these animals can't move in any direction other than forward. Sharks have no vocal cords. They can't produce sounds to communicate with one another or express their emotions. That's why they have to use body movements, like twisting their bodies or flipping over. Sharks live in all of the world's oceans, but several species also inhabit freshwater rivers and lakes. For instance, bull sharks have been found in tropical rivers. They're also known to be able to swim between fresh and salt water. The smallest shark out there is the dwarf lantern shark. This unique creature doesn't grow longer than 8 inches. But the shark makes up for its tiny size in other ways. For example, some of its organs emit light. And since the creature lives in the shallow waters, this helps to camouflage it in the rays of sunlight. Blue sharks eat a lot often more than they need. Some of this food can remain undigested for weeks till it's needed for energy. Sharks have something that looks similar to a tongue, but this organ is called the basheal. It's the front section of the cartilage that goes from the shark's chest to its mouth. It doesn't move and is pretty much useless. The so-called tongue doesn't take part in the process of feeding. It isn't covered in taste buds. 
Its only real use might be that it supports some of the bones connecting the shark's gills. There are hundreds of shark species in the world, more precisely, around 500. Some of them are pretty bizarre. Just look at the goblin, basking, or cookie-cutter shark. All these sharks vary in size, from several inches to dozens of feet long. They also live in absolutely different environments. Tiger sharks eat whatever they can get their jaws around. Some of the weirdest things they've munched on are video cameras, bags of money, license plates from almost any U.S. state, dog leashes, <laughs> you name it. Each whale shark has a unique pattern on its skin. These spots and stripes can be used to identify individual sharks, just like fingerprints are used to identify people. The blunt-nosed six-gill shark can dive to a depth as great as five Empire State Buildings. Baby sharks are called pups. When they get born or hatch, they are already fully nourished. And if they choose to swim away from their mama shark, they don't need to hunt for food for at least several weeks. Uh-oh, did somebody say baby shark? <laughs>